Hello everyone. I thought it would be a good time to do another little Facebook Live. And I know that everybody has probably been in a lot of worship services and heard a lot of sermons today. So I just wanted to leave you with a couple of ideas. Something to chew on, something to think about. And uh, just like last time, I think, you know, we might just start out with a little song. And maybe we'll end up with a song. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Robin. It says wave, but since I'm over here and you're over there, I'll wave. Okay? What a beautiful day today has been. It's a reminder that this is a remembrance of when Jesus went into Jerusalem to fulfill the scriptures. He was prophesied to come. He was prophesied to come in the way he came. And he is prophesied to come back. And he will come back. So this week, all week long, I'm, I'm uh, thinking on different people that were there, what their perspective was. And then I got to thinking, what's our perspective? You know, we hear uh, a lot of sermons, a lot of topics, a lot of things presented, and it kind of goes in one ear and out the other and it kind of leaves us going, yeah, 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 I know that. So for the next few minutes, I'd like to invite you to just stop and think on him. Because a lot of things we hear, they're talking about all the things he did, what he intended to do, what he intends to do, and all that is wonderful. It's very needful for our souls. It's very needful to strengthen our faith. But we also need to look at Him. To look at Him and see Him as He is. Because that's when all of this other stuff drops into its proper perspective. And we need perspective right now, don't we? Gosh, I have never seen so much criticizing information things that are just pounding heads all day long. And the thing of it is, I said last week, everybody's guessing, but God knows the truth of the situation we're in. And he knows it intimately, and he knows us intimately. And so what he says about what he will do, how he will deal with this, what he will give us, what we need when we need it. He's already doing that. He's already at work in that. I heard a great analogy one time, and it was like, for anybody that's ever gone to a TV station or done a TV show or whatever, you know, you could walk into the control room of a television station, and you see all the monitors on the wall, and they're all feeding. They all have their own feed, and they're feeding in information. And, they're, and there are all these live feeds coming in. But you see one thing at a time broadcast on that channel. That's kind of how God works. All of these things are going on. You may only see one thing at a time. You may see 50 things at a time. God sees it all at one time. And He knows how to navigate the waters we find ourselves in right now. We don't know what all's going on. But we can trust him because he does. He knows the good players. He knows the bad players. He knows the lies. He knows the truth. And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talked about he introduced the terminology, in Christ. In Christ. We're in Christ. We are in Christ. And that means we're hidden. You know, other people look at us and they see us. But 
but our adversaries don't see us the way we really are because we're hidden in Christ. And that means when we're hidden in Christ, guess what the other side of that coin is? Christ is in us. He is in us, empowering us and helping us to know that we're kept safely in his grasp. If you don't know that, I want you to know that. I want you to know that more than anything else for you. And I want you to know that because I'll rejoice over it. So if you don't know him, reach out to me in a private message. I would love to introduce you to him. So, you know, we talk about we need toilet paper, we need paper towels, we need canned goods, we need this, we need that. Let me tell you what you need. You need Jesus. And then you'll have everything you need provided. That's what he says. And in these days of uncertainty about this COVID or about the flu or about, I don't know what the issues all are, but I do know this. God promises deliverance to his people. Now, the thing that we have to accept is that God decides what deliverance looks like for us, for each one of us. The promise is, I will deliver you. What we cannot do is tell him how he has to deliver us or when he has to deliver us. You know, if you look at all the calamities that could come upon us, you look at our um, witnesses of the faith in the Bible, God chose the method of their deliverance. Some he delivered from a thing. That thing didn't touch them. Some he delivered through a thing. It touched them. But he brought them through to the other side. And some he delivered by a thing. In other words, sometimes the thing we fear most is the vehicle we're waiting for. <laughs> and I'm not trying to make light of fear. I'm not. I am trying to make large of God's promises because they are. So whatever God has for each of us, he promises deliverance. He promises that in the truth, in the end, all truth will be revealed. And he promises that either by, from, or through, he will see us to the other side. So don't fear and don't worry. And this economy is nothing for God. He owns it all. And the mechanism that powered the economy hasn't gone anywhere. It's just been home for a couple weeks. You know, all of those things can come under the hand of God who restores all things in the end. So, no fear, perfect faith, perfect love casts out fear. So I would rather have Jesus than anything else. Because if I have Jesus, and I do, everything else will be taken care of one way or another for me. And I want it to be that for you too. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I would rather have Jesus than riches untold. I would rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today or then to be the king of a vast domain and be Jesus than anything
bring this world afford today. I would rather have Jesus than You know, when I think about <laughs> my being in Him, I take great comfort from that, but it takes my breath away to think that He's in me and what that means. Because all I think it means is a pretty big thing, but all God knows it means is an even greater thing. I like what Vince Gill said. You can kill me. You can kill my body. You can't. I can't die. You can only change my address. And I'm certainly, I'm not going to die from a shortage of toilet paper. I can assure you that. And I am thinking you're not going to either. So, it's important to remember that when Jesus went to Jerusalem. So many things were at play on those monitors in the background. And, you know, I wrote a song with uh, Jeff Steele and Jeff Ferguson some time back. And the Steeles cut this song and I love this song because there is, in Hebrews, the scripture talks about our high priest and how he is a, a discerner of spirits and he divides the bone from the marrow. He, he discerns our thoughts. He examines us. You know, in the, in, in the temple, when the priest examined the sacrifice, the sacrifice always died. He didn't, like, I mean, he would look all over the outside of the sacrifice and examine it, but that was not enough. The sacrifice was divided into pieces and laid on an altar. They looked at every piece individually. Now, when Jesus... Our high priest looks at us. He's the only high